Chapter 981. New Stage and Final Stage. There would be 10 days of rest after the completion of the group stage. The next stage of the tournament would begin on 5 16, a Friday night. There would be three rounds over the next three weeks until the Challenger League champion was crowned. The teams eliminated in the group stage returned home one after the other over the next few days. Many player teams felt very satisfied because they had managed to reach this step. They received quite a chunk of prize money from the Alliance. Their trip could be considered worthwhile. The team most unwilling to leave was Team Mysterious Fantasy. After the end of the second day of the group stage, the press released news that Mysterious Fantasy's coach, Zhang Yue, had stepped down from his position. Reporters tried to contact him, but all of their requests were declined. The official statement from Mysterious Fantasy said that from their three seasons of experience, they felt like coaching wasn't suitable for the current glory competitive scene. The following 5 ninths issue of the eSports Home also published this piece of news. However, most of the news was focused on Team Happy, the team that had eliminated Team Mysterious Fantasy from the tournament. Chong Xian prepared a detailed introduction on Team Happy long ago. What's more, he had revised it multiple times after consulting Team Happy. Now that Team Happy had attracted so much attention, Chong Xian finally had the opportunity to bring out the article that he had been holding onto for so long. Team Happy had finally been introduced on the front page. Apart from that, how could they not want to know the team's thoughts? In the same issue, Chong Xian also did an interview on Team Happy. Chong Xian had finally made it into the spotlight this week. Through his relationship with Happy, he alone took up half of the space given for the Challenger League. The other two reporters, that had come specifically for the Challenger League, were filled with envy. They had also grabbed onto Team Happy. They had looked to do interviews for Happy and had written also introductions for them, but how could they know as much as a team reporter like Chong Xian? The final articles chosen to be published were all Chong Xian's. Becoming a team reporter for an Internet Café grassroots team? In the beginning, the two had laughed at Chong Xian's decision, but now they couldn't even force a smile. Let's see how long his pride will last. The two thought venomously, and began cursing for Team Happy to hurry and get eliminated. If they couldn't profit from it, then the material was worthless in their eyes. As for Cao Guangcheng, he deserved to be an experienced reporter. He didn't even try and fight with Chong Xian for Team Happy. He continued to insipidly write about his specific topic. This week, he analyzed Team Excellent Era's situation with the new tournament format. The Challenger League entered the next stage, while this season's Pro League had entered the final stage. 5 tenths. The 34th round of Season 9 of the Glory Alliance. Team Tyranny and their four Heavenly Kings had steadily held the lead since the start. Even now, their position at the top of the regular season standings remained unshakable. In addition, with their efficiency at earning points, breaking the record for total number of points won in a season was no problem for them. However, trying to beat Team Excellent Era's Season 2 record would be practically impossible. That season, Team Excellent Era won a total of 276 points. It didn't seem like a very high number from a total points perspective, but that was because the Alliance only had 16 teams at the time. Back then, there had only been 30 matches in a season. Thus, comparing their total points would not be a good comparison, so comparing the average number of points won per match would be more fair. In that case, Team Excellent Era won 9. 2 points per match on average during the second season. This record was ridiculous to the point of being untouchable. With only 4 rounds left the season, it was already hopeless for Team Tyranny to challenge it. However, just being able to vie for the record already showed Team Tyranny's unquestionable dominance this season. In second place was last season's champions, Team Samsara. This season, they strive to defend their title. Even though they had been suppressed by Team Tyranny in the regular season, the playoffs and the regular season were unrelated. Team Blue Rain pushed them down last year too, but who won the playoffs in the end? The regular season had more matches over a longer period of time. It tested a team's consistency, but the playoffs was an elimination tournament. Two matches would determine the winner. It tested a team's explosiveness. Third, fourth, fifth place was Team Blue Rain, Team Wind Howl, and Team Tiny Herb respectively. 
The number of points between the three teams was very close, so it was not possible to distinguish which team was better than the other through placings. However, Team Wind Howell failed to even make it to the playoffs last season, yet now they had turned a new leaf this season, becoming a powerhouse no weaker than Team Blue Rain and Team Tiny Herb. Tang Hao's transfer had already been considered last summer's most successful transfer. The fight for the last three playoff spots for the 6th, 7th, and 8th place team were very extremely intense. Team Misty Rain was in 6th place. They had no strong teams in the next four rounds, so their situation was looking up. Team 100 Blossoms was in 7th place. They had lost too many points during the start of the season. They only started catching up after they managed to recover. Their situation was somewhat grave. Team Void was in 8th place. The Ghost Duo had lasted for so many years. They had always placed neither low nor high as if they were stuck at a bottleneck. Their performance this season had its ups and downs. Even though they still held onto their playoff spot for now, many people considered them as the team most likely to disappoint. If they lost their playoff spot, they might just keep falling from there. What were the chances of Team Void losing their playoff spot? It was actually quite likely. Team 301 was biting at their heels. Team 301 was the model example of an average team. Their players weren't the best and their characters weren't the most powerful, but the team operated extremely well. Their team's performance was very consistent, and they frequently made it to playoffs. Their performance this season had been affected by Shu Bin's departure. If not, they might have forced the inconsistent Team Void out long ago. The teams closely behind Team 301 were some of the great mysteries of the season. Radiant, Conquering Clouds, Heavenly Swords, Parade These four teams moved up and down the rankings together. They were neatly in order from 10th to 13th place. It was truly surprising. In the beginning, their initial impression was that they should be pacing back and forth between the relegation zone. Instead, they had actually run past it into the middle zone. It was even possible for them to make it into playoffs. Teams with all-stars like Royal Style and Seaside had been forced behind them. The original 10th place team, Team Thunderclap, also surprised many. Now, they had been pushed aside too. These four teams benefited the most from the new game update. However, only the club guild elites competing for wild bosses in the game knew the real reason why they were performing so well. However, as the season proceeded towards the final stage, the focus of the teams shifted again. Many pro players withdrew from the game and began focusing more on their matches, especially the teams bordering on the edge like 100 Blossoms, Void, and 301. How could they dare to be careless now? As soon as these teams started focusing on the matches, those four teams obviously met with trouble. From a points perspective, they could still make it to playoffs, but in reality, these four teams knew in their hearts that they had only been profiting at the other's expense. Taking advantage of them was just a one-time thing. They still didn't have the strength to rival them on equal footing. The Pro League and Challenger League had reached their most exciting stages. However, because there was quite a wide skill gap between different teams in the Challenger League compared to the teams in the Pro League, everyone's attention was more focused. Thus, apart from a few teams, the majority of the teams weren't under much pressure. Team Excellent Era's opponents wouldn't go so far as to not sleeping, trying to figure out a strategy on how to beat Excellent Era. Everyone would laugh at them, treating them as silly people with their panties in a bunch. Ten days passed by quickly. It was finally match day. Among the eight teams, the highlight match would be between Team Jade Dynasty and Team Trader. Group B's Team Trader made it past a former pro team. They were clearly the biggest dark horse in this offline tournament. They had spectacular performances against Group B's Team Happy and Team Mysterious Fantasy. In this match between Team J Dynasty, no one could be certain that Team J Dynasty would win just because they had once been a pro team. The Dark Horse's journey ended here though. The highlight match ended dully. From the group arena to the team competition, Team J Dynasty seemed to be following a routine. They kept advancing step by step until Team Trader finally fell. The matches for Team Happy and Team Excellent Era were without any suspense. 
player teams were easily beaten by them, so the most interesting match was the one between Group C's first seed and Group D's second seed. The strength between the two teams was quite close. Even though the quality of match wasn't that high, it was at least exciting to watch. Unfortunately, if this type of excitement was enough to satisfy the crowd, why would pro teams need to exist? The quarter-finals ended just like that. None of the matches made anyone's blood race. Even the media reports towards the matches felt dispirited. However, thinking of the next confrontations, everyone's spirits rose. In the top half, Happy and J Dynasty would clash. This should be a fairly high-quality match. As for the second half, players who supported Excellent Era and had yet to tire from them winning would continue to be in admiration as their gods crushed enemy weaklings. Two more matches. On the morning of the second day, Chen Guo woke up from her dream with a smile. Sunlight had already filled her room. The joy from her dream had yet to recede. She looked to the side and noticed that her roommate Tang Ru was nowhere to be seen. She woke up so early? Chen Guo muttered to herself. She got out of bed, washed up, tidied everything, and then left the room. The corridor was extremely quiet. Chen Guo reckoned that the others were still sleeping, so she didn't go to bother them. She went downstairs, ate breakfast, and then headed over to the Internet Café practice room. Excellent Era had booked their own hotel, while the liveliness at the start of the offline tournament was no longer as crazy. Of the 19 teams at this hotel, only three remained. Everyone was together in the same place during this period of time, and everyone shared glory as their passion. The players all loved to play the game, so even though they were here to compete against each other, they still became good friends off stage. Those who could make it to this stage of the Challenger League were outstanding players. As a result, Chen Guo was quite enthusiastic about recruiting these people for happy. But even if they were outstanding, many of them had their own foundations in the game. Most of them shrugged off her attempts to recruit them. Chen Guo had lots of experience with the game. She understood all of that, so she wasn't impatient. Her chasing haze added many friends in the game during this period of time. They could meet again in the heavenly domain. In comparison, more people were more interested in Yi Shu. What was surprising to Chen Guo was that Yi Shu didn't seem to avoid many topics, even though he had always acted mysterious in the past. What's going on? Chen Guo was puzzled. What do you mean? I was using someone else's name before. How could I not try to keep a low profile? Yi Shu said half jokingly. Chapter 982. Team Jade Dynasty's Consistency. Was the fake identity the reason why Yi Shu had been hiding the whole time? Yi Shu didn't seem to be serious when he said that was the reason, so Chen Guo was uncertain. Before Chen Guo met Yi Shu, if it was said that God Yi Chu didn't accept interviews or do endorsements in order to focus on competing, Chen Guo would have believed it. She knew him better now though. Chen Guo always felt like even though Yi Shu's dedication towards glory wasn't false, he wasn't so dedicated that he would refuse to do anything else. After knowing him for so long, Chen Guo felt like Yi Shu must have many reasons for hiding his identity. For example, in the beginning, he didn't want his family to find him after running away from home. Keeping a low profile because he was using a fake identity was a very understandable reason too. Yi Shu was probably too lazy to deal with that stuff anyways. These may all have been reasons for why he had molded his image as this mysterious god, but now, his family problems weren't as serious as back then. His fake identity problem had also been resolved. Thus, of those three reasons, two were no longer issues. It made sense that Yi Shu would push the boat along the current and stop hiding. Chen Guo continued thinking about it as she walked towards Happy's practice area. It wasn't empty at all. Everyone in Team Happy, including Mo Fan, had gotten up even earlier than her. All of them were busy in front of their computers. Why didn't anyone wake me up? Seeing how enthusiastic everyone was, Chen Guo felt very ashamed and grumbled to Tang Ru. I didn't think everyone would be up so early either, Tang Ru said. Was this all a coincidence? Chen Guo said. Yup, Tang Ru nodded her head, when I got here, Yi Shu and Old Wei were already here. What's everyone up to then? Chen Guo looked around in a circle. The majority of them were practicing. Only Yi Shu, Wei Chen, and Sun Jeping were gathered around a single computer. All three of them had their hands crossed over their chests. Their expressions were grave as they stared at the screen. 
There was a glory match recording being played on the screen. After Chen Guo went closer to take a look, she could see that it was one of Team Jade Dynasty's matches. The offline tournament had been going on for a month now. Not only did she recognize every player on the remaining teams, she also recognized the characters on each team too. The screen was currently displaying one of Team Jade Dynasty's matches in the group stage. Chen Guo watched for a bit, but she didn't see any problems. Team J Dynasty was heralded as a pro team, but their performance was always very mediocre. In their next match, more people actually favored Team Happy. After eliminating Team Everlasting and beating Team Mysterious Fantasy 10-0, no one doubted that Team Happy was the real deal. However, beating Team Excellent Era. Very few people believed that it could happen. However, in many people's eyes, Team J Dynasty wasn't even as good as Team Everlasting or Team Mysterious Fantasy. When they fought against Team Happy, wouldn't they lose even more miserably than the other two? However, Chen Guo saw how solemn the three gods looked as they watched J Dynasty's match. She felt like there should be a reason, so she was too afraid to rashly come out with her wise opinion on the matter. She watched along with them for a while longer. This match ended with Jade Dynasty winning the team competition. What do you think? Yi Shu spoke. Your analysis is reasonable. Sun Jeping nodded his head. What's going on? In the end, Chen Guo couldn't help but interrupt them. Oh, we're studying Jade Dynasty. Yi Shu turned his head and saw Chen Guo. He gave her a quick explanation. Is there a problem with Jade Dynasty? Chen Guo asked. J Dynasty's performance has always been quite mediocre, but being able to maintain that mediocre performance the entire time shows how terrifyingly consistent they are, Yi Shu said. What does that mean? Chen Guo didn't understand. It means that they've always been more than up to the task asterisk. They have the ability to win their matches in a more dominant manner, yet they only play at this level, Yi Shu said. Why is that? I don't know, Yi Shu shook his head, maybe it's because they're intentionally showing that they're weak, or maybe it's because it's a way to practice their control over their rhythm. In short, this isn't Team Jade Dynasty's true strength, Chen Guo said. It's just a guess. For now, all three of us acknowledge that it's a possibility, Yi Shu said, while pulling out his QQ. He clicked on a profile picture in his friends list. His QQ trembled and then he sent a, hello hello hello? Then, the QQ interface showed that the other side was typing, but no reply came after a long time. Yi Shu waited patiently and typed again, is it that bad? Even your typing is so slow? Chen Guo moved closer to take a look. Her jaw dropped. The other side's name was, Yu Wen Zhou. Why did Yi Shu look for Team Blue Rain's captain? Chen Guo was puzzled. Then, she saw the other side's reply, they should be suppressing their rhythm deliberately. But I don't think that it's because they're forcefully pretending to be weaker than they actually are. They should be playing slower and more patiently in order to play consistently. Their playing looks as if they're out of practice. It's as if they're still familiarizing themselves with new characters. As I thought, Yi Shu replied. That's just my own opinion, Yu Wenzhou expressed. Okay, I've got it. Sorry. If you're sleepy, then you should go back to bed, Yi Shu said. Quote dot 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 quote. Yi Shu closed the chat window and then looked at Wei Chen and Sun Jeping, his opinion is the same as ours. It looks like that really is the case. Chen Guo figured out what had just happened. She stood on the side, dumbstruck. These guys analyzing it was fine, but even pulling Blue Rain's Yu and Zhou in and having this top master help them analyze it too? This this this, this is breaking the rules, Chen Guo said. Breaking the rules, Yi Shu turned his head and looked at Chen Guo, what rule did we break? This this this, Chen Guo didn't know what to say. There was no clause in the rules that talked about this, but Chen Guo felt like it was the big bullying the small. If J Dynasty knew about this little exchange, they'd probably be crying out of grievance. Those three weren't even done yet. Should we go ask Zhang Jinji and see what he thinks too? Wei Chen said. Him, Yi Shu checked the time. He gets up from bed, washes, eats breakfast, exercises on a punctual schedule. You can't take away a second from his daily routine. Let alone when he replies, we can't even count on him replying. Isn't there another master tactician? Sun Jeping said. Xiao Shikin, Yi Shu asked. I think that's his name. Sun Jeping nodded his head. Can't you pay more attention to the younger generation? 
You can't even remember their names, Yi Shu looked at him disdainfully. Yeah. What does, yeah, even mean? Stop wasting time. Just go ask him, Sun Jeping said. Do you not understand what type of situation we're in? Do you know which team he's on, Yi Shu said. Which team? Excellent era, Yi Shu said. Oh. Oh. Do you not read news about transfers, Yi Shu said. Never, Sun Jeping said. Yi Shu actually already knew that. The person in front of him never cared about that sort of stuff. For him, who cares if there are any changes in a team? Just chop them to pieces. What's the difference? Asking him probably wouldn't be too convenient, Yi Shu said. Yeah, Wei Chen nodded his head, who knows, he might just intentionally try to confuse us with his analysis. Wei Chen thought about Xiao Shikin from a shameless perspective. Right, Sun Jeping nodded his head, that's also possible. People who play with tactics have dirty hearts. Yes yes, all of them are shameless, Wei Chen immediately expressed his approval. Sun Ziping's evaluation of tacticians clearly included Yi Shu. After all, he was one of the four master tacticians. Haha, ha, Yi Shu laughed dryly. You're not even ashamed, Wei Chen shook his head and sighed. And you even think of it as something glorious, Sun Jeping also sighed. He looked at Yi Shu like he couldn't be saved. Ha ha, Yi Shu laughed again. Says the two who were both beaten by me. It looks like Team J Dynasty won't be easy to deal with, as expected, Wei Chen switched subjects. The switch was choppy, showing his shamelessness. Yeah, from our analysis, Team J Dynasty might not be hiding anything in terms of their playstyle. What they've hidden is the strength of their characters, Yi Shu obviously wasn't going to waste time arguing. He followed along and started talking business. The strength of their characters can't be considered weak though, Wei Chen looked through the information he had. It was all the detailed information that could be found on the current Team J dynasty. Chong Xian had organized it for them and handed it over. There were already plenty of level 75 players after five months. Level 75 orange equipment naturally weren't as rare as before. For a former pro team like Team J Dynasty, even if they couldn't get it themselves, they could still use money to buy it. Orange equipment had a drop rate, after all. Their value couldn't be compared to silver equipment. If a team set their sights on going pro, if they didn't even have the heart to spend money on orange equipment, then it was best if they disbanded. Team J Dynasty hadn't given up after so many years. They could still invest some money into equipping everyone with level 75 orange equipment. If these characters were still hiding strength, then only silver equipment could improve them. Does Team J Dynasty have such backing? Wei Chen wondered. I don't know, Yi Shu was also at a loss. If they weren't in the Challenger League, those in the competitive scene would probably have forgotten about them already. Maybe. They got some sort of sponsor, so they have money to spend now, Chen Guo interrupted at this moment. Her opinion was very reasonable. This came from her personal experience. Team Happy's outstanding performance in the offline tournament had already attracted several different organizations, who wanted to discuss a partnership with Team Happy. Of course, no one had signed anything yet because all of the organizations still needed to wait and see how well they did. Just their current performance wasn't enough for them to want a long-term partnership. However, if Team Happy actually beat Team Excellent Era, their talks for a partnership would intensify. The current Team J Dynasty seemed to be hiding their strength. Chen Guo suddenly thought, could this team also have received this type of support? Chapter 983. Happy's Fan Club. Sponsorship. Yi Shu shook his head. A sponsorship was a business move. The sponsor needed a benefit from the sponsorship, so organizations usually looked for strong teams, teams with lots to talk about, or teams that would receive a lot of attention. The Challenger League viewership was very small. Few sponsors would gain any benefit from sponsoring Challenger League teams. Happy receiving sponsorship talks was an exception. Even though Happy wasn't a strong team in many people's eyes, Happy also never lacked topics to talk about. Happy was receiving more and more attention too. Even so, no one had reached out for sponsorship yet. It was clearly because they felt like Happy still hadn't reached the level they wanted. The business didn't want a short-lived night-blooming cactus, but a long-lasting partner. In the Challenger League, there was only way to achieve this, getting the final victory. This time's Challenger League had excellent era. 
If Happy actually won, the attention that Happy received wouldn't be on the same level as the past Challenger League winners. The current interest towards Happy had much to do with Excellent Era. It was the existence of Excellent Era that gave them such value in this year's Challenger League. J Dynasty's performance in the Challenger League had been very mediocre too. Even though they had Excellent Era as a touchstone, they should be in the same boat as Happy. They had to at least beat Excellent Era first before getting any sponsorship offers. Chen Guo's deduction wasn't logical. But from this perspective, Yi Shu thought of another possibility. J Dynasty had switched owners. Teams and clubs were similar to companies. They could be bought and sold too. If J Dynasty had been purchased and the buyer had a lot of money, having a strong backing all of a sudden was an extremely likely possibility. Why bother thinking about it so much? Sun Jeping said, even if we can't see through them, we just have to prepare for them well. When the time comes, we just have to beat them. There's no other way, Yi Shu nodded his head. Since they couldn't get a read on Team J Dynasty's true strength, they had no way of preparing for them in a targeted manner. If they rashly came up with strategies, it was very possible that it would come back to bite them. As a result, this week's practice was just to work hard and improve without any big changes. J Dynasty's players continued to go to the internet cafe in the hotel to practice. When they saw Happy, they would smile and greet them. Everything seemed warm and friendly. At this moment, only these two teams were going in and out of the internet cafe. The other team was up against Excellent Era next and had already given up. They might as well take the week off and have fun, so they had gone off to Tour City B. They hadn't come to the internet cafe a single time this week. In the blink of an eye, it was match day. The eSports Home published by Weekly. The Monday issue was after match day, so it introduced the contents of the match and commented on the predicted results. The Friday issue was before the next match day, so it was mostly trivial news, as well as predictions and preparations done by the teams. The Challenger League may be a small steamed bun, but it had juicy meat. There was no lack of things that needed to be written. 8 p.m. Offline Tournament Stadium. The number of matches every week became fewer and fewer, but the number of viewers only increased. After Team Happy entered the stadium through the player passageway, they headed over to their seats. Suddenly, they heard a crash. A distance away, in the audience behind their player seats, was a huge banner, Team Happy. Certain victory. Then, they saw a bunch of people sitting there and cheering loudly. Huh? Chen Guo was surprised. Even though there had been a few Team Happy fans before, she had never seen this kind of support. Yi Xu's personal fan club had once gathered together and cheered them on, but who would have thought Team Happy would finally have a fan club too? Chen Guo felt delighted in her heart. But in the next moment, she heard a crash from nearby. Another banner had dropped saying, Team Jade Dynasty. Certain victory. It didn't matter whose banner was bigger. The typeface for Team J Dynasty was superior to Team Happy's. The fan club over there looked at Team Happy's fan club in delight. They started cheering loudly too. All of a sudden, Team Happy's fan club had been drowned out. But Happy's fan club weren't afraid of this kind of challenge. They started shouting loudly too. There were even a few curses mixed in. Soon enough, just cursing out loud wasn't enough. They started throwing whatever they had in their hands like water bottles at J Dynasty's side. This time, J Dynasty's fan club looked as if they couldn't hold on. They didn't counterattack with weapons of their own. Even when Happy's fan club had been cursing at them, not many of them cursed back. Right when Happy's fan club were immensely proud of their victory, the stadium's security guards rushed over and surrounded them. Chen Guo was very worried for them. She hastily ran over to talk to the security guards. Then, she saw the security guards give a harsh warning and picked out the guy who arranged the long-range attacks, preparing to escort him out of the stadium. This time, Happy's fan club refused to cooperate. After another loud commotion, the security guards said something again and the commotion gradually died down. The lead instigator left, but he wasn't escorted out. He was simply placed in another seat. The turnout for the semi-finals wasn't bad, but the Challenger League's popularity was limited, so the majority of the stadium was still empty. This lead instigator was thrown into a lonely and desolate section filled with empty seats. As for Jade Dynasty's fan club? They had victorious smirks on their faces as if they knew this would happen. Chen Guo saw this and was extremely unhappy, but Yi Xu knew with just a single glance that Jade Dynasty's fan club was experienced and organized. 
They had experience watching these sorts of matches and knew their limits. On the other hand, Happy's fan club were much more wild. Creating such a commotion would obviously force the security guards to come out and stop them. Team J Dynasty arrived too. They saw how the previous scene unfolded and couldn't help but look towards Team Happy and chuckle. The player seats for the two competing sides were located near each other. This time, the fan clubs on both sides had gathered behind them. They hadn't even started fighting yet, and a dispute had already arisen. Happy and J Dynasty was just an ordinary match with nothing to celebrate about. It was easy to imagine just how intense the struggle would be between two teams with a deep rivalry. The players sat down in their seats. Someone from J Dynasty said something to the fan club behind them as if to appease them. Chen Guo noticed this. She couldn't fall behind. She also stood up and turned around. Then, she saw the faces of the fan club filled with expectations and suddenly didn't know what to say. A person suddenly jumped out from among the crowd, waved his hands wildly at her, and shouted, Boss, boss, it's me. It's me. Before anything else happened, security guards immediately rushed over. That person immediately shrunk back, but he was still pointing fiercely at himself, it's me. Seven fields. Seven fields. Ah, Chen Guo was dumbfounded. For a moment, she couldn't remember who that was. The others already learned from Seven Fields and started introducing themselves. Guild leader, it's me, Cruel Shadows. It's me, Flying Ghost. Little Lobster. Banner Wastrel. Frozen Mast. Quote dot 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 quote. It's you guys, Chen Guo blurted out. She had seen these names many times before, but they were a bit unfamiliar to her. All of them were members of the 10th Server's Guild Happy. They were the first few to join the guild and help build the guild up from scratch. A few of those guild members had reached the Heavenly Domain. A few continued to stay in Happy. Others started their journey anew after arriving in the Heavenly Domain, but there were also a few who stayed in the normal server and continued to play there. For example, the ones who had come from Full Moon Guild like Seven Fields and Sleeping Moon's group. They had originally been veterans from the Heavenly Domain, but had come to the new server after the 10th server opened. For normal servers, the end goal was to reach the Heavenly Domain. Thus, it could be said that, in glory, those who switched to the new server to restart their journey were dedicated to staying in the new server, they wouldn't go to the Heavenly Domain. Otherwise, it was all meaningless for them. Seven Fields and the others hadn't been from a club guild. They didn't come to the normal server to build and grow a certain guild. The reason that they came to the normal server was because they didn't want to play in the heavenly domain anymore and only wanted to enjoy the normal servers. As veterans, their skill level was higher than all of the noobs in the new server, so they became Happy's backbone. The backbones of the guild always carried a certain amount of influence. The four had long since abandoned the heavenly domain, so they obviously didn't have any favorable impressions of the heavenly domain. Due to their influence, quite a few members of the 10th server's guild Happy stayed in the normal server instead of leaving for the Heavenly Domain. And now, they had come over to the stadium to support their team. Chen Guo didn't know where these guys were from, but all of them had gathered behind Team Happy, becoming a solid support group for them. You guys, Chen Guo started to get emotional. She was someone who could easily make friends with others, but she didn't know what to say towards these familiar faces. Yi Shu quietly stood by her side. The players immediately became excited. Ah. God Yi. Look. Yi Shu had left the normal server too early, so a lot of them weren't very familiar with him. Seven Fields knew him though. They had met quite early on, even before Steam Bun. Where's Little Moon Moon and the others? Yi Shu asked Seven Fields with a smile. Haha, <laughs> sunset clouds and drifting water live too far away. It wasn't convenient for them to come visit. Isn't Little Moon Moon sitting over there? Seven Fields pointed. The lead instigator, who had taken the lead in throwing a water bottle at the opposing fan club and had been put under house arrest in an empty area, was Sleeping Moon. Ha 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 ha, it's actually you guys, a person suddenly got up from Chen Guo's side. Steam Bun had stood up on his seat and waved excitedly towards Happy's fan club. Oh oh, it's Steam Bun. That fool, everyone roared. Yi Shu was a god. When they faced him, they always felt pressured and didn't know what to say. However, when they faced Steam Bun, they immediately became close. Steam Bun had come from Guild Happy, so they knew all him very well. 
Ha 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 ha. Watch me f asterisk ck these guys up. Steamed bun pointed towards Team J Dynasty. 1v5. Do you dare? Happy's fan club shouted. Chapter 984. Jade Dynasty's boss. The fan clubs for both teams had come, so the teams had to interact with them, of course. For Jade Dynasty, the team and fan interactions were peaceful and harmonious. The team thanked their fans for their support and the fans didn't stop shouting encouragements toward the team. For Happy, their team and fan interactions were rambunctious and like a riot. Nothing needed to be said about Steam Bun and his pals, but they weren't unfamiliar with Tang Ru either. It was just that Tang Ru was extremely headstrong and fierce in game, so while she might have had a lady's voice, many people suspected. Now that they saw the player behind the character, they found that, not only was she really a girl, but she was also immensely beautiful. Everyone was rather embarrassed to speak for a moment. Apart from those two, there was also Luo Ji, who had been a part of Guild Happy for a long time, becoming close with the other Guild members and even provided them with many walkthroughs and the such. In the eyes of rookies and noobs, Luo Ji was also an expert among experts. Now, seeing that he was even part of the team, who wouldn't nod and say, an expert is expected. Chao Yifan's one-inch ash was usually being power leveled by a different person, so he hadn't had much interaction with Guild Happy's members. However, since his name was a part of the guild, he was one of them, so there would naturally be this sort of closeness. Over on Happy's side, there was a rowdy atmosphere, often catching the attention of the security guards. So Happy's players didn't dare to make any sudden movements. There was a gap between the audience seating and the players seating, and this was for the safety of the players. According to the rules, the audience couldn't enter the surrounding areas. However, sometimes fans would want autographs and after getting the permission of the players, the guards would let it slip occasionally. However, one of Happy's fans had already been dragged out today for overstepping their bounds, so they became the target of the security guard's watchful stare. Because of this, they obviously couldn't be as casual as they wanted to be. They were all chatting happily, but they could only yell across the gap at each other. J Dynasty's polite interactions were done in a few moments. That was when they saw Happy's rowdy and laughter-filled area, which didn't seem to be ending. They felt conflicted. They kind of envied Happy's closeness with their fans, but at the same time they were disdainful of their grassroots demeanor. However, their thoughts then changed. Even if they didn't consider anything else, with just God Yi Chu's identity alone, Happy was far above their entire team. What sort of right did they have to be disdainful of the other's grassroots demeanor? J Dynasty's players all felt a little down, dully sitting there and waiting for the match to start. Their fan club had also gone quiet, sitting there and watching Happy's side. Talking about envious, it was the fans who were truly envious. The pro teams of today sat high above everyone, and their players were all celebrities, becoming more and more distant from their supporters. This sort of close and familiar interaction was something they could only dream of. Seeing the cheers coming from Happy's side and comparing it to their own rather cool airs, one person sitting in J Dynasty's player stands turned and smiled at another, saying a few words to him. After that person nodded, the two stood up together and walked towards Team Happy with a smile. Yi Shu had long since noticed these two. These two had never appeared in J Dynasty's lineup before and today was the first time they had shown their faces. However, they couldn't be players either. The offline matches didn't allow the changing of your lineup mid-tournament. In addition, the person on the right seemed older, probably around 30 years old, while the one on the left was relatively younger, about 25 or 26 years old. Seeing the two approach, Yi Shu stepped forward to meet them. After the others noticed, they all stopped their conversations and turned to place their gaze on the two. Hello, God Yi, the two initiated greeting upon coming forth. You are Zhang Jian, the relatively older one on the right introduced himself. Yi Shu paused for a moment after hearing this before giving Zhang Jian a closer look. Soon he remembered. It's you? It's been quite a while, I didn't even recognize you. For insignificant people like us, it's already enough of an honor if God Yi has heard of our names before, Zhang Jian said with a smile. What are you saying? Yi Shu smiled as well. Zhang Jian was also a first-generation pro player and was J Dynasty's captain back then. For the first two years, he led Team J Dynasty from the very bottom of the alliance. 
Compared to the captain that had led his team to gain two consecutive championships in both years, he was as opposite as could be from Yi Chu in the alliance. From this point of view, saying he was an insignificant person wasn't being modest for Zhang Jian. However, considering his individual strength, Zhang Jian wasn't as insignificant as his team who always placed last. Yet in the pro league, strength didn't always mean a good record, and a good record was what truly proved your strength to people. With Jay Dynasty coming in last place for two years in a row, a record that couldn't be worse, he, as the captain and ace, took the blame for it. In the second season, the alliance began to relegate teams and Team Jay Dynasty, at the bottom of the ranks, was relegated. However, Zhang Jian received some invitations from other teams. Just when everyone thought he was going to take the chance to escape the sinking ship, he stayed and pulled Team J Dynasty back into the alliance against all of the pressure and friction against them. After that, he retired. Then after that, there was no more news from this player. Back then, glory wasn't so grand as it was now and pro players wouldn't make enough money. Retired pros lived normal and simple lives. As for a player like him, from a shitty team, there would be little effort made to seek out his circumstances and whereabouts. Yi Shu had never thought that, after all these years, he would meet this person again in the glory circle. And he was even standing with Team J Dynasty which he had once fought alongside with. Could it be that he had gotten rich over these years and bought the team? As Yi Shu was wondering to himself, Zhang Jian introduced the young man beside him to Yi Shu. This is the boss of Team J Dynasty, Xiao Jia. Oh, Yi Shu was guessing if Zhang Jian was the boss, yet in the next moment, the boss had been introduced to him. Speaking of which, Yi Shu really had no clue who Jay Dynasty's boss was. The information Chang Xian had given them didn't say much either. However, this man who was only around 25 or 26, obviously couldn't have always been Jay Dynasty's boss. How old would he have been back then? Probably only 16 or 17. Yet after this introduction, and when Yi made a surprising move by coming forwards to ask, Xiao Jia? Is it that Xiao Jia? That was when the young boss nodded with a smile. Yes, I'm that Xiao Jia. Who is this? Yi Shu and the others all looked to and Wen Yi. He's a best-selling author, and Wen Yi explained. Author, Yi Shu scratched his head. This identity seemed very distant and alien to him. Wei Chen was even more exaggerated, and took several big steps over in a rush upon hearing what they were saying. Author. Where is he? Let me see. I haven't seen a live specimen before. As for Chen Guo, she was quite curious as well, but she wasn't as exaggerated as Wei Chen. This was because she saw a thick air of ignorance for everything non-glory related coming from Wei Chen. Greetings, author. It's an honor, an honor. Wei Chen came up and grabbed the man's hand, shaking it with vigor. Big Boss Wei. I watched a lot of your matches as a kid, Xiao Jia said with a smile. Oh oh, really? Do you want my autograph then? Ha 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 ha, Wei Chen said without any embarrassment whatsoever. Xiao Jia smiled without saying anything in response. It was clear that he wasn't Wei Chen's fan. However, his words had already revealed some information, he was someone who had remained a fan of glory for a long time. It seems like Boss Xiao is a fan of Jade Dynasty, Yi Xu said. Yes, I've always been one, Xiao Jia replied. You must not have had it easy then, Yi Xu commented. On that side, Zhang Jian rolled his eyes. These words were a little mocking, and yet it was the truth. Jade Dynasty wasn't anything impressive, yet they could still gain a fan that was so loyal to them throughout all these years. This was indeed not easy. Hey, that's true, even Xiao Jia himself agreed. Jade Dynasty's battle records have never been that good. It makes people rather worried. However, in the past, I could only be anxious about it and do nothing else. Now things are better. I have the power to help the team I support and I'm quite relieved with that. Jay Dynasty should be rather relieved, too, having a fan like yourself, Yi Xu said. Haha, <laughs> Xiao Jia laughed a little. He had wanted to say more, but saw the referee walking over. Seeing both sides look over, the referee waved his hand. Go and prepare. The match is about to begin. Then let's talk after the match, yeah, Yi Xu suggested. We could also talk as the match goes on. I want to listen to what a god thinks and sees about the match, Xiao Jia said. No problem. We're sitting pretty near each other, after all, Yi Xu agreed. Then please. Please. They might have said please, but they didn't sit together immediately, but returned to the player stands to prepare for their upcoming match. 
As for words like, I wish you the best, they wouldn't say it. They were opponents after all. Wishing the other the best would be equal to wishing for your own failure. This sort of cliche words couldn't be more empty if said here. Happy returned to their players' stands, but their hearts were in turmoil. They could tell what the situation was between Xiao Jia and Team J Dynasty through these few words. Xiao Jia was a fan of J Dynasty from long ago and continued to support this team throughout the years. It was unfortunate that this team never lived up to his expectations. Yet this young man grew day by day and became a best-selling author, a successful person, so he bought the team that he supported. Such support from a fan was probably the first of its kind in glory history. The only people who could be put on the same level were the people who played glory and ended up making their own club and pro team to enter the alliance like Heavenly Swords' five young masters. This explained J Dynasty's miraculous history. However, this would be no help to the victory of the match. It was better to not get distracted by such trivial things. Seeing that the match was about to start, Seven Fields stopped the others from bothering the members of Happy any longer and took command, telling the people who were meant to hold banners to hold banners, the people who were meant to be cheering to cheer, immediately beginning their support parade. J Dynasty's fans obviously refused to be beaten, immediately doing their own thing in order to compete with Happy's fan club. On Team J Dynasty's side, Xiao Jia sat in the seat closest to Happy, as expected. After glancing over with a smile, their team's first member stood to go up. Chapter 985. Hidden Strength. With this new tournament format, how should the teams choose their pick order? The teams worried, and the players were also concerned as well. Everyone was vigorously researching and discussing such topics. Using the previous group arena strategy of placing the ace players at the end to hold the bottom line was too conservative and quite undesirable with the new rules. However, directly placing these ace players at the front of the lineup also seemed excessive. In the competitive scene, 1v3 sweeps happen too rarely. The remarkable displays often seen in the group arena matches usually consisted of a two-player up and down. This so-called two-player up and down was a situation in which one player, after defeating their first opponent, also took their second opponent to half health, or possibly, after defeating their second opponent, they had little health left while facing the third and fell quickly. Even this was already considered a rarely seen success in the group arena. Thus, even if an ace player appeared first, they wouldn't necessarily bring their team a huge advantage. The good steel still had to be used on the blade of the knife. While previously, the ace players had fought towards the end to guard the mountain pass, now they had to do their best to gain an advantage when there was an opportunity, in order to achieve victory. In this way, appearing on stage at the most optimal time was key. For example, if an opponent only had half a person remaining, sending out the ace player at that time would maximize the chances of victory. After going through a lot of analysis, the current consensus was that, in this five-person group arena, ace players should be placed in either the third or fourth position. Except, even in this way, the group arena scoring was far more complicated than the team competition. The future development of the group arena should be stable. Teams should focus on not losing too many points in the group arena, and using the team competition as a tiebreaker. At present, the forecast predicted that the future competitions would head in this direction. Except today, when J Dynasty went on stage, their first player was actually their captain, the Blade Master, Lin Yi. Looking at the previous matches, wasn't Lin Yi J Dynasty's most outstanding player? Now, astonishingly, he was the first to step on stage. Did he have that much confidence, or was there another reason for such an arrangement? J Dynasty's boss, Xiao Jia, hid his smile the entire time. He turned towards Happy, making an inviting gesture towards Happy. Yi Shu smiled, immediately patting the people next to him. Forward. Oh 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 oh, immediately, Happy's fan club surged because of the person that stood up. Steamed bun, 1v5, obviously the fans didn't care whether or not this was realistic. Either way, this was a cheer. If it wasn't grandiose, then how could it be called a cheer? Ha ha ha, Steam Bun laughed. With his personality, he didn't care at all about what order his opponents sent out their troops. He waved his hand, turning to his group of in-game friends and pumping his fist in the air. 1v5, Steam Bun yelled out. From the bystander's point of view, this really was an arrogant and shameless guy. J Dynasty's fans had long started booing. After this was said, Happy's fans really felt too embarrassed to earnestly respond. 
Them shouting was just shouting, they obviously also knew that there was no way a 1v5 would happen. Using this to challenge other people, wasn't this just asking for their faces to be slapped? Both sides players immediately went on stage, swiping their account cards to enter the game. Happy's players all looked at each other. All of their screens were stopped on the character loading image. After the characters had finished loading, the screen would display the character's equipment for the entire audience to see. Sure enough. Lin Yi's character, Blader Master 10,000 Swords, struck a pose. Just from the character's attire, everyone could see what was different from before. As soon as the equipment viewer was opened, a line of glittery silver names jumped out. From head to toe, 10,000 swords had seven pieces of silver equipment. Although this was one less piece than Windward Formation, in reality, Happy's silver equipment wasn't evenly distributed. Wei Chen's Windward Formation had eight pieces, but the rest of Happy had far less than that. Furthermore, Yi Shu's Lord Grimm only had a single silver weapon, Myriad Manifestations Umbrella. When it came to silver equipment, Yi Shu mainly prioritized his teammates. Yet, most pro teams wouldn't be this ridiculous and heavily favor one character over another. Although the core characters would definitely consume more resources, they wouldn't go so far as to give one character eight pieces of silver equipment while leaving another with only one. Adding on to J Dynasty's shaky foundation, Lin Yi's 10,000 swords equipment level likely represented the average of the team. An average of seven pieces of silver equipment. This armor surpassed the alliance's average level. Sure enough, J Dynasty possessed a lot of hidden strength. However, of 10,000 swords seven pieces of silver equipment, not a single piece was level 75. After all, level 75 materials were very limited. Right now, in the Alliance, level 70 equipment were widespread. All of this was accumulated over the years while the level cap had remained at 70. If any team really wanted to upgrade their equipment over the course of a year, they would have to monopolize the Heavenly Domain's uncommon materials. Trying to do this would make any team go insane. J Dynasty's circumstances were well understood. Thus, Happy's players maintained calm expressions. J Dynasty being able to acquire this many pieces of silver equipment so quickly probably wasn't due to financial resources alone. After all, Xiao Jia was only a young writer. No matter how well his books sold, there was no way he could compete financially with people like Luo Guanning. Moreover, Luo Guanning had a five-man crew. Even with that, they had only managed to obtain a total of 20 pieces of silver equipment when they had entered the alliance. Although J Dynasty was in dire straits, when all was said and done, they had started off as a member of the Pro Circle. After so many years, they still hadn't given up. No matter what, they still had to have accumulated resources. Xiao Jia's investment this time had probably come at an optimal time, exploding forth all of J Dynasty's accumulated resources. Additionally, that guy Zhang Jian perhaps was also a crucial figure in breaking out J Dynasty's potential. Back in that era, he was a pro-level player. If he still hadn't given up after all these years, then his achievements in glory wouldn't be a small matter either. As Yi Shu waited for the people to realize J Dynasty's circumstances, on stage the first round of the group arena had finally begun. After the countdown finished, both sides' characters entered the map, and the competition officially began. J Dynasty's boss, Xiao Jia, had indeed done as he promised. As soon as the competition began, he gathered together with Yi Shu to chat. I think your team's current player is really interesting, Xiao Jia said, his voice giving off a kind of pompous tone of seniority, but to tell the truth, Yi Shu wasn't really at an age where he could be looked down upon. 25, 26, there was basically no difference in age between the two. Your team's player also seems quite steady, Yi Shu replied. A team captain needs to be like this, Xiao Jia sighed. It looks as if he still isn't the ace player of J Dynasty, Yi Shu said. Xiao Jia smiled, immediately asking, from God Yi's perspective, which of our J Dynasty's players do you think is our ace? Yi Shu also smiled, turning to look towards one of the players on J Dynasty. Your ace player would find it difficult to guide your troops into battle as the core. He's instead acting as your final line of defense. God Yi indeed has a good eye, Xiao Jia gave a thumbs up out of praise, also turning to look at this player within Team Jade Dynasty, the cleric Lu Shilin. 
However, Godye's statement that a cleric is unable to guide troops as the core, I think that's a bit old-fashioned, Xiao Jia said. A. Actually what I wanted to say was leading, not guiding. I used the wrong word. Sorry about that. I'm sure you know that I'm no writer, Yi Xu said. Xiao Jia stared blankly, suddenly not knowing whether to laugh or cry. Leading, guiding, these two phrases only differed by three letters asterisk asterisk. The meanings were indeed a bit different. He had thought about picking a fight with Yi Xu to prove he was superior. He didn't expect the other party to immediately use a wording error to cover this up, conveniently mocking his own identity as a writer at the same time. It seems that God Yi also has a card up his sleeve when it comes to responding to this threat, Xiao Jia composed himself and continued to ask. In reality, as long as he's not the core player leading the team, there's really no need to specially respond, Yi Xu replied. Really? Xiao Jia smiled again, not saying any more. He went back to his seat to continue watching the competition. This guy really liked to smile, the dim, faint kind. At first, looking at these smiles easily created good feelings in people, thinking that there was a good reason for his modesty. However, after these kinds of smiles came time and again, they no longer conveyed that same meaning. Instead, there was pride and conceit. He used this kind superiority-filled expression to express his disapproval of the other party. From Chen Guo's perspective, it would be better if he directly said, you truly are an idiot, to his heart's content. This guy's smile is truly annoying, Chen Guo said to Yi Shu. He's annoying even when he doesn't smile, making this team to cause trouble for us. It's truly troublesome, Yi Shu said. Quote dot 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 quote. Off stage, the exchange stopped at this point. On stage, Steam Bun Steam Bun Invasion and Lin Yi's 10,000 swords had already exchanged blows for quite a while. Neither side had specific tactics for this round, directly heading for the middle of the map. As soon as they met, they began to fight. Mechanics, awareness, judgment, a battle without much scheming. With more experience, more solid tech skill, and better equipment, Lin Yi very quickly gained the upper hand. He didn't have the strength to completely suppress Steam Bun, but his steady and unaffected state of mind nevertheless partially restrained Steam Bun's derailment. Although from time to Steam Bun would jump out with an ingenious move, it didn't have any psychological impact on Lin Yi. Though this kind of randomness could and possibly follow any rules, Lin Yi actually managed to use his steady mind to remain completely unaffected. Yi Xu glanced over at Jade Dynasty. Coincidentally, at that same moment Xiao Jia also happened to look over towards him with that same smile again. His superiority seemed to say, look, I know. The opponent's first player had been chosen as a tactical move with purpose. It seemed as if they had guessed Happy's intent. Although no one knew how skilled Xiao Jia was at glory, as a fan of Jade Dynasty from the early days until now, he was clearly a glory fanatic. It appeared that when it came to glory, this guy also had some skill. Seven Fields and the others had been wildly cheering for Steam Bun in the beginning. At this point, they were feeling a bit depressed because they could all see that the present circumstances were quite unfavorable towards him. If even the audience members could tell, then the circumstances were quite obvious. The commentators nearly announced the results. Haha, <laughs> it looks like the outcome of this match is already clear, Xiao Jia moved closer to say. Everyone can already see the obvious, but there's still one more person who isn't so sure, Yi Xu said. Who, Xiao Jia didn't understand. It was so obvious. Who couldn't tell? Look, Yi Xu held out his hand, pointing towards the screen. Our steam bun is still fighting energetically, 